Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at the HCT math topic of slope and linear equations. So first we're going to do a quick review on how to calculate slope from a graph, uh, from two points, from a table of values, or from an equation, whether that equation is in slope-intercept form or in standard form. And then we're going to take a look at how to uh, calculate the y-intercept and then put those two concepts together. Then I've got five ACT practice problems having to do with slope and linear equations that we're going to solve and explain as well. Let's take a look. All right, so let's review slope. Slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. Another way we see that written is uh, delta y over delta x. Delta just stands for the difference or the change. We can also see that written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We just take the two y values of the points we have and divide it by the difference of the two x values of the point that we have. Or graphically, you might see it referred to the rise over the run. So how much it changes up and down divided by how much it changes left and right. So let's take a look at all the different ways to calculate slope. So in a graph, we're going to take two points. Uh, you want to take two points that um, you can figure out where they are. See those two points cross um, right at whole numbers. And then we want to see how much y changes or how much the rise is. So to go from one point to the other, we've got to go up by 6. And then we have to go over by 9. So the difference in y over the difference in x or the rise over the run is going to be 6 over 9. And then we can reduce that fraction to 2 thirds. When we have two numbers, uh, the first one we can label x1 and y1, and the second point we can label x2 and y2. So to find the slope of the line that goes through those two, the numerator is going to be the difference in the y's. The denominator is going to be the difference in the x's. So we subtract those out and we get 4 over 6. And again, reduce the fraction whenever we can, and we get 2 over 3. Now if we have a table of values, uh, it's very similar to doing it with two points. We just pick one of the points that we're going to use. So here, the 4 and the 2 gets us the numerator. And then the 6 and the 3, the difference of those two, gets us the denominator. And we can pick any point. One thing to keep in mind though, we've got to go in the same direction. So if we go 4 minus 2, we've got to do 6 minus 3. Don't switch it around and subtract the other way. We all, you can do 3 minus 6 and 2 minus 4. You just need to keep consistent. And then there we get 2 over 3. So now an equation. Notice this equation is solved for y. This is in slope-intercept form. We can just pick the number that is being multiplied by the x, and that's our slope. So 2 over 3 is our slope. Now if we have an equation that's not solved for y, we've got two different choices. We can solve it for y. So if I add 2x to both sides and divide both sides by 3, uh, I can solve for y. And then I can get the slope by the number that's being multiplied by x. Or we can look at this in standard form. So standard form is ax plus by equals c. So a represents the number that's being multiplied by x. b represents the number being multiplied by y. So to find the slope without converting it uh, and solving for y, the slope is negative a over b. So in this equation, it's going to be negative, negative 2 over 3. We just pick the a and the b value from the equation. And then negative a negative 2 gets us positive 2 or 2 over 3. Now let's take a look at the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is, on a graph, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. It is also the y-value when x is equal to 0. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So back to our same graph, the point where it crosses the y-axis is right there. And what's the y-value for that? y value for that is negative 2. So we say the y intercept is negative 2. Now if we have a table of numbers, 
um, the y value when x equals 0. So notice back at the graph, if we have whatever our y intercept is, whatever our y value is where it crosses, the x value is going to be 0. So if we look at the table and find where the x value is 0, then that also will get us that same point. The y value for that point is our y intercept. So for this, that's going to be y equals negative 2. Now an equation, again, if the equation is solved for y, it's in slope-intercept form. And we can just pick the number that's not being multiplied by x uh, with the sign, and negative 2 is our intercept here. If we have it not solved for y, again, we can do two different ways. We can solve for y, and then pick off the um, y-intercept, which is the number that's by itself. Or in, in standard form, ax plus by equals c. The y-intercept is going to be c over b. So in this case, it's negative 6 over 3 or negative 2. One last thing I want to take a look at is um, parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, so parallel lines have equal slope. So if we look at that same graph we've been looking at, y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. If we have another line with the same slope, y equals 2 thirds x, or y equals 2 thirds x plus 2, all those lines have the same slope of 2 thirds, and they're going to be parallel. Perpendicular lines have a negative reciprocal slope. So y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. What negative reciprocal is? First, reciprocal, we flip over the 2 thirds. So instead of 2 thirds, it's going to be 3 over 2, and then we make it negative. So if we've got y equals negative 3 halves x minus 2, that's going to be perpendicular to that. And anything with that slope, anything with a negative 3 over 2 slope, is going to be perpendicular to our purple line there, which has 2 over 3 as our slope. Okay, let's take a look at these five ACT math problems that have to do with slope and linear equations. So in the first problem, what is the slope of the line that passes through negative 2, 1, and 2, negative 5? So slope is going to be our change in y divided by change in x. So y, we can do negative 5 minus 1. And for x, 2 minus negative 2. So 2 minus negative 2. And you got to be very careful with signs here. And also make sure you go the same direction. So if I'm subtracting the negative 5 and 1, don't switch it around and go negative 2 minus 2. You've got to keep them the same direction. Or if you want to do it in y's and x's, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. 2 minus a negative 2 is a positive 4. Reduce this and we get negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2, choice D. Okay, so for a table, um, you could plug in a value and see if it works. The only thing you've got to be careful with there, like if we plug in um, 0 and 10, it's going to work for a couple different ones. When it works for a couple different ones, then we've got to pick another one and just try it on the ones that worked with the first point, right? Uh, but to do this uh, with what we know about slope and y-intercept uh, might be a little, little easier, actually. So um, we are changing our um, x is changing by 4 when our t changes by one. So our slope is going to be four. And then we can look for where our um, value is zero, and that's going to get us our y-intercept. Right, so our y-intercept is going to be 10. So we've got a slope of four, y-intercept of 10, slope of four, y-intercept of 10 for C. A um, little confusing because I used x for what we usually refer to 
as um, y. So we're, that's why we're looking for where t equals 0, not where x equals 0. All right, which of the following is the graph of 2x plus y equals 4? I think the easiest way to do this is just solve um, for y. So if we subtract 2x from both sides, we're going to get y equals negative 2x plus 4. And then we see that we have to have a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of positive 4. So the y-intercept of positive 4 is here and here. This one has a positive slope. This one has a negative slope. So our choice is going to be choice A. That's the one with a negative slope and um, a y-intercept of 4. Now you could also plug in values. So you could take some of these values that you can see, 0 and 2, 2, 0, right? You could pick any of these that you, that you know and try them. The only thing is you might get two that work, and then you just have to pick another point. Like here, if we put in 0, 4 for both of these, um, it would have worked for both of these, but none of B, E, and C. And then we would just have to pick another point. So if we picked 0, 2, um, it, would, it would have worked, but 0, um, I mean, negative 2, 0 would not have worked. So that's another method of doing it. But probably easiest just to solve for y of what we know about slope and y-intercept. All right, so it gives us a point 0.25 right here. And it says, which of the following is another point on the line that goes through 2.5 with a slope of negative 2 thirds? So let's just put that slope in. So negative 2 thirds go down 2 over 3. Or you could also go up 2 and to the left 3. Right? So this is going to be our line here. I'm going to go right through these three points here. And you notice that D is on there because D is just down to and over 3 from the point that we know is on there. So D is going to be our answer. All right, the last problem, we're looking for the slope of a parallel line. Uh, the slope of a parallel line is just going to have the same slope as the line. So the slope of this line is 2 over 3. The slope of any parallel line is also going to be 2 over 3. The choice is E. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.